Hi guys, and welcome to another video. So, you probably read the title and thought, Jesus, what's happened now? And I promise you, I have actually really tried to refrain from making every video of me just sat here saying, be loud. And I haven't sort of fully jumped on that bandwagon in terms of constantly throwing that message out there. But dear God, this man does not help himself at all, does he? He really, really doesn't. And you might be thinking, what am I talking about? Unless you've been living under a rock. Yesterday, he did have a pre-match press set for the game this weekend. Now, bear in mind, he's had all week to try and select the right words to say, or at least the club together could get behind him and say, right, put this message across, try and get him back on side. And dear God, did he just push everyone further and further away and disconnect his fan base even further from the club in the words that he chose to make um and i'm, I'm going to go through it a little bit uh, i'm guessing you guys have already seen it but i'm going to go through it a little bit and explain what i'm i'm talking about so why was this press co sorry this press conference such a shit show now let me break it down so firstly nick barnes journalist really respectable guy i really have massive respect for him he asks you know he says how's it feel you know you're not exactly the sort of top of the popularity polls with Sunderland fans at the moment. What, how does it feel at the, at, the, at, the, you know, at the moment within the camp, blah, blah, blah. How are you feeling, that thing? And then he very sarcastically says, um, you know, we're in the same position we were when I first got here. So, uh, yeah, we're in a crisis, aren't we? But he said it in the most sarcastic way. And then, you know, then he says, you know, it, before he came... Uh, or with the previous manager there was only two wins in the last nine now since that last manager's left and since he's came in charge there's been four wins in the last nine no he's only won he's won two uh, he tried to literally claim uh, um, Mike Dodd's couple of wins he tried to slyly just chuck them onto his own record which was wrong and then go to say we don't listen to the outside noise um, and persistently referring to the Sunderland fans as almost outsiders outside noise and just noise in general so rather than trying to get the fans sort of rejuvenated and galvanate the fans and try and get them on board he has just disconnected the, or proved how disconnected we are from the club at the moment and he has done absolutely nothing to help the cause in that sense either by furthering the wedge or widening the wedge between the fans and this team which we were getting so close to under Tony Mowbray you know I, some this team at the moment has produced some of the best football I've seen at the club in years for the you know how long have I I've supported the club for what 25 plus years 30 years I've supported this club and, and it's something that has been some of the best football and again and I don't want to keep going over it because it's boring me Tony Mowbray I feel we, we can't Try and, and I've seen a lot of fans do this. Let's not try and dress up or romanticise how good Mowbray was at the back end of his tenure because it was piss poor football. We were looking like we were starting to go down and we'd hit, sorry, go to a bit of a downward spiral. We were regressing a little bit already, so I'm not putting all that on Beale, but we had hit a bit of a brick wall with Tony. So, as much as I love the man, and I think he was a fantastic manager, a great man manager, man motivator. And he kept that bond between fans as well. It was time to move on. But again, my point is, that doesn't mean we shouldn't have sacked him. It just means we should have appointed someone else. No one wanted Beale in the first place, which I know you don't always get what you want. But dear God, he was so far away from what the fans wanted. And, you know, he comes in. He's a Class A bullshitter in the way that he talks. He is a Lee Johnson 2.0. It was never... He had to... The only way he could win, up, win the fans over, to be fair, was if he literally came in, hit the ground running, and started winning every game. Which I know any manager could. But some managers, they have that bit of personality and that likability. This man ha doesn't have it for me, personally. And I know that isn't what it's all about. And I know it's not just about accents and the way... That, I know it isn't that at all. But it goes a long way if you, if, if you know that they're just not... Uh, Class A bullshitter, and that's the way he comes across in the way that he talks. It does sound like another Lee Johnson. And Sunderland fans know the football. Do you know what I mean? We know our football. You, you know, we, you can't bullshit us. Tell, call a spade a spade. Say what it is, what it is. And, and, and explain and try and get us on board. Don't don't give us these little digs and, you know, and try and dress up shit. You know, it, it, don't give us that. You know, we, we won't buy it. And I'm not buying it, for one. I don't know anybody else. I'm not buying it. But, um... But either way, so, and then you get, they start asking him and speaking to him about uh, funds, transfers, etc. And then he says, you know, we don't have one of the biggest pockets in the league. And essentially says we don't have too much money. And all of this happened in about the space of two minutes, 90 seconds. And then there was a power cut. 
absolute shit show. <laughs> it, I was watching it live on YouTube and it was literally all the comments were be like, be like, be like, be like. And then he was in the middle of talking, bang, power cut, shit show. So uh, anyway, yeah, so that's that was his sort of press conference in a very short space of time and then it was cut short. Um, but then Speakman had an interview later on which completely contradicts what Beal was saying. So Beal was saying we don't have the biggest pockets in the league and granted that could generally mean just in comparison to like Southampton and others at Leicester but the way he was saying it, it was clearly meant to say we don't have much money. That is the way he, he was interpreted and you can see that that is what he meant. But then Speakman comes out and, and says money isn't a, a hurdle for us type thing. Well, that is what he said. But money isn't an issue. Money isn't an issue at all. So what is it? Are we are we skint? Do we have money? And to be fair, again, when you look through, and I saw a stat today um, on, on Twitter, there was something like 24 signings have been made, or sorry, 35 signings have been made across the 24 teams in the championship. And I think it was like 80% of them are loans. And there was like four of them, or five or six of them that were permanents. And all in all, only three million has been spent. So it isn't like someone else is running away with it and throwing money at it and getting loads and loads of players in. It's not like it is a very, very slow market, and I can appreciate that. But we absolutely need to get a fucking move on. There's five days left. There's been no movement. Although there has been a little bit of good news. So this isn't going to be a purely negative video. I'll try my best. Uh, so Pritchard, Speakman has revealed that Pritchard. Um, he has been offered a new deal. He also admittedly said that that does kind of go against his uh, his usual mode of, of so his process uh, and his mode of thinking. Because usually, if anyone does deserve a contract, he said he wouldn't be looking to do that until March. But because he is coming to the six, even even though we only have six months left, usually they won't start doing that until March time when they start reassessing our options. But because he has been that good and they seem as that much of an important figure, they've offered him a deal. Whether he's going to sign it, I'm not too sure. Um, I think he's a vitally important cog in the in the machine at the moment, Pritchard, and we do need that experience. And he's also, Speakman sort of brushed aside uh, our thought process behind uh, the, the model, if you will. That's, some, that's a term we've used for, a, for the best part of two or three years now, haven't we? And it's always been, it seemed to be, and I'm sure Speakman got this across as well, is bringing in sort of better youth prospects from all over the place, improve them and build on them if they, if they say they stay if they don't we don't we make money on them that's business that's fine that is the model that we thought was put in place and now Speakman has turned back and said no that was never the model this is just the way that people have interpreted it we've re-signed the likes of 09 we got Danny Bart in that time Corey Evans Bradley Dat players that have more experience Pritchard you know offered a new contract so there are examples there but they are very few and far between but he is basically trying to say we're not looking just solely at kids and that's it. Um, so that is that sort of bit of news. And also, apparently, we have looked at the idea of bringing Amadiello. But how many times have, have I made this video this month about Amadiello? Um, apparently, it, it could come down right to the last day with that one, depending on what Manchester United want to do. And it is very much in their hands. Um, but apparently, there has been talks. Um, but whether it's going to happen, it, it's unlikely. Uh, there's obviously been more rumours around, uh, is it Styles who plays for Barnsley? Not particularly enthused about that one, but I don't really know the player, so I'd only be, I'm just telling the truth. I'm not particularly enthused. I don't really know him. Um, on Twitter, the Barnsley fans don't seem like they would really care if he went. Apparently, he's been wanting to leave for the best part of two years there, so he hasn't really done much. He's a, a sort of utility midfielder who can play left back, playing in, in the middle. Uh, of the park, left mid, right mid, it could do a bit of everything. I don't know anything about him personally, so again, I'm, I couldn't sit here and, and give you a full profile of the lad, but I don't really know him. We've been linked with a uh, uh, centre mid from Leon. Uh, again, his name evades me. Six foot six, young central midfielder. Which again, I think that we need it. We need a deep. We need a holding midfielder, so we can release the likes of Equa and Neil to go forward because. As I've said previously, Neil, I think he offers a lot going forward, but because he has to focus so much on, on the back work, then uh, it, it, it kind of holds him back a bit. Equa, I know people like to think of him as a holding midfielder. He isn't. If you look at his best performances, the have been when he's, he's been given the sort of role and the freedom to get the ball and bring it forward against teams, and he's very, very good at that usually, but because his mind is so focused on back there, he can't do that. So, uh, so yeah, there's that. Kiefer Moore's been linked again. However, it has been rumoured, it has been touted that uh, Kiefer Moore... It 
yeah, apparently they're not interested in a loan anymore, Bournemouth. It would have to be money, and that's what's putting off a lot of teams that were originally interested in him, so I'm not too sure. Speakman has said that four offers are currently on the table. Uh, a couple of loan offers and a couple of permanents as well, but didn't go into detail on who, what players, whatever. But apparently it's just a waiting game at the moment. It's always it's Because it's players who are obviously registered at other clubs, we can't force a transfer. It has to be all on their terms largely until when a deal actually happens. But, uh, but that's everything at the moment, guys. Uh, we are playing tomorrow, of course. I'm at work, so I'll be doing the review on Sunday. I will be able to slightly watch it at work, I hope. Uh, but, uh, but yes, anyway, I realise I've rambled on there. None of these videos are scripted. I just think about what I'm going to say. Uh, or I have a couple of points in my head and then just ramble. So I hope you enjoy anyway. <laughs> but let me know in the comments down below what you think about everything I've mentioned. Uh, and like the video. Please hit the like button for me. It's massively appreciated. And subscribe. If you are new, there have been quite a few new subscribers recently, which is very nice. But if you are a regular viewer and you're not yet subscribed, please do. It really helps. But for now, take care and stay jammy.